Welcome Performance Medicine viewers and listeners. Um, here we are for another demo, and boy am I excited, because you're, you're right down my alley. We're gonna draw up some fluid. I was gonna say insulin, but this isn't insulin. So I'm teaching, we've had some requests on how to draw up uh, liquid from a syringe, whether it be testosterone, insulin, whatever. I'll teach you how to draw it up. But first, I have to have some music. And this is who I always go to. If you're ever in the room for me and I, you don't have a suggestion, this a little lady, I don't know if you've ever heard of her, Dolly P, our patron saint. Can't do anything without her. So thank you, Dolly, for being here with us. May you always be here with us. So let me teach you. What we do with drawing uh, medicines or fluid from a bottle and a syringe is you always want to clean off the top. There's going to be a rubber stopper at the top of a bottle. Let's pretend that this is insulin. This is a big bottle of insulin. You're going to go ahead and clean gently with an alcohol prep so it's nice and clean. We're going to practice drawing out of a syringe first. So this is a 100 unit syringe. I usually like using 30 unit syringes. But this is what they call subcutaneous. That means that this can be injected into the fat tissue, not IM, which is gonna be our next draw. You're gonna take the needle off, and you're also going to take the bottom part because you need the plunger and the depressor in it. So the goal for this is to not get bubbles. How do we get rid of bubbles? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put the insulin syringe into the stopper, then, see how it's depressed. Now, too, there's another way to do this. You can always put, say I want to draw up 20 units. I can draw up 20 units of air, and then I can depress into the solution and push down. It creates a vacuum. In this case, we don't really need it. I'm going to flip while still keeping up, and I'm going to draw up. You'll notice that there's air at the top, so I'm going to draw up to 20 units. And what I'm going to do is come out. See, if there's still air, this is how you get it out. You flick, that's all you do. Flick and flick and flick. You're gonna hold with your left hand, non-dominant hand, you're gonna hold very tightly at the bottom, and you're gonna gently flick and flick, and two, push out a little bit. Flick, now see it's going everywhere. Try to get the air bubbles right to the plunger. Perfect. Sometimes you just have to play around with it. Perfect. Now it's got under there, I'm going to push it through, and I have air coming through with nothing in. Flick and push, and then I'm ready to inject. Now another way to do this, so let's push that out. They call alligators, so this is fun. So two, I'm going to do this again. Holding it like this. So you're going to hold it in your non-dominant hand, like an alligator. and draw up. This is how you keep it all in one hand so that you play around with it. That's another way of doing it. And then you're done. So remember, flick and push and gently guide out. Now two, if you get a little air in this, it is not going to kill you. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You have to have a lot of air to have an air embolism. People get scared about air because do you want to have a clean injection or you don't want to die from having an air embolism? An air embolism is a lot of air going directly into your uh, into your veins. Directly, because then it's going to go to your heart and it's going to stop. That is really hard to do. I, I don't want to say it's hard to do because you want to make sure it, it becomes more of an issue with IVs than it does subcutaneous or intramuscular. If a little air is in that bubble and it gets in, it's, it's not going to kill you, so that's okay. I just want to say, you don't want a ton of air in an IV because if you stop it and then send a bunch of air to your IV, it can go in and it can cause a pulmonary embolism. So that's what you don't want, but that's where it becomes more prevalent of not having bubbles in. But to really get bubbles in, flip, push. Now, too, we're going to do this with an IM. So an IM injection is with a larger needle. It's usually a, um, a one-inch needle. So what we have is a 23-gauge, one-inch needle. 23-gauge, the higher the gauge, the smaller the needle. So the one that we did in insulin syringe is usually around... 30 to 32 millimeters as a gauge, or 30 to, 30 to 32 gauge, and about four to eight millimeters long. That one we just did was eight millimeters. This one now is one inch and 23 gauge. 
Smaller the number means thicker the gauge. An 18 gauge needle is gonna be very thick. That's a horse needle. You do not wanna give an injection with an 18 gauge. It's just putting all over your skin. But a 23 gauge or 27 gauge is great for IN. So note too that it's a lot, thick, uh, a lot thicker too here. This is a 3 ml or 300 units. Every ml is 100 units in a syringe. So two, say I wanna draw up 1.5 mls. I'm gonna put 1.5 mls into the solution with air. You want the bevel to, top, to uh, hit the top part of your number. So the bevel hits the top part of the number. I'm gonna push down, push the air in, turn gently, and now I start depressing. I'm gonna keep depressing until I hit 1.5. Now two, you can always, I like flicking afterwards. People will flick and kind of play around with pushing in. Did you see that? I just got rid of some air by pushing back in and playing around. A lot of the steels with vacuum seals. Does everybody see that? Is that good? Perfect. No. I've drawn out. I notice I still have some bubbles. Get rid of the bubbles and you'll see that I want the bubbles to line up going into the needle and I'll push through. And that means that I have cleared my injection and I've cleared the needle. You wanna make sure that you really put liquid through the needle See where it's coming out at the top so that you're giving all the medication. And that's how you give an injection. I'm not gonna shoot with this, okay? Who needs bacteria static solution, am I right? Um, thank you for joining me unless I get a note from production that we need to include anything else into this video. I think we're all clear and in the go. Thank you so much, production team. Yeah. Um, and I just wanna give a personal shout out to, to Miss Dolly P. Thank you for being with us. We're listening to the classic After the Gold Rush from 20, uh, um, 2015. So, here we go.